だってじゃないよ、うちの人生は。Hi, I'm Cake. I'm a 26 year old Brazilian girl and I've been into Japanese culture since I was a kid. So, to summarize, I'm your average Otaku Whip. This video is my response to certain happenings in the Japanese idol fandom, more specifically inside Hello Project, but also about how those happenings made me think of all several topics concerning Japanese media and how I see it. So, if you're a fellow weeb or just a regular person that may be interested in that, come with me and I'm going to do my best to explain everything in a comprehensible way. When I started to write the script, the events I talk about had just happened. But even though it's not a recent topic anymore,、um, there are some subjects that I think should be more broadly discussed and I want to at least give my personal opinion about. I'm certainly not an expert claiming to understand everything about Japan. I just want to talk about things that make me uncomfortable as a fan so we can think about them together and maybe make a world a better place in the future for all of us, maybe. I just realized it was a bad decision to put、uh, envies here because now people are going to know how much I, how much I had to redo the sentence because <laughs> I'm like in the beginning of the video. And there's another MV passing already. I, should I? Wait a minute. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. It's not a problem. Okay, so let's get to it. About a year ago, on February 11th, 2021, the online tabloid of Bunshun posted an article revealing that Takagi Sayuki, a girl from a Japanese idol group called Juice Juice, Was dating and probably living together with this male singer Yuri, who had made a hit song a few months earlier and got extremely popular. The very next day, her agency, Upfront Promotion, announced she was finishing activities within the group, together with an apologizing note from Sayuki herself, which I'll be back to in a moment. If you're not into Japanese idols, you might think. So what? So what? Was she underage? No, she was 23, turning 24. But most people that are into Japanese music or maybe just anime might have heard about this at some point. Idols are not allowed to date. People like to use the Minigishi example because, well, she went bald. Well, to sum it up, she was from the most popular idol group at the time, AKB48. And after Bunshun made an article with photos of her leaving her boyfriend's apartment, she went bald and made a very humiliating video crying. And even though she's probably the only idol that did that ever, and she was not forced to do it, like some people assume, visual examples are so strong that several media vehicles reported it at the time, including BBC. Anyway, the message is clear. Dating for idols? It's a no no. They can get into trouble with their fans and are usually demoted or even fired from their agencies when there's scandals break out for breaching contract. So, why is that? To answer that question, I'll probably have to make a 30 minute long video, and I'm not sure that's what I originally wanted, but let's give it a try anyway. I'm sure to us from the West and even most people from the East as well, the fact that a performer is prohibited by their employment contract to have a relationship is a very weird thing. The first thing that might come to your mind are those shut in hardcore otaku who think about their waifus as their real girlfriends. Are all idol fans delusional sims who want to date good girls? But yeah, I've struggled with this rule a lot for a long time. You see, I first got into idols in 2008 when I was a 13 year old browsing YouTube. Morning was mid. Morning was mid. Momusu, as we call it, is one of the most well known groups in Japan's history. 
thanks to their major popularity in the early 2000s, and is still currently the most popular group inside Hello Project, which is the umbrella name given to all the groups managed by Upfront Promotion, which include Juice Juice and the group Sayuki, the girl I mentioned before, was a part of. But only in 2014, six years after I got into Momosu, when the idol Kik Kawaiyu came to Brazil, that I began to understand that love bomb rule somehow. You see, I, I got in touch with this Japanese fan of hers through YouTube. I used my somewhat broke Japanese at the time to mention her upcoming life in Brazil. And to my surprise, he said he was going to come see it. Not only him, but other three Japanese fans as well. When they told me that, it completely blew my mind. I mean, what? Why? They can see her all the time in Japan. Why come to the other side of the world just to see this girl perform? That made me realize the sheer commitment of Idol Otaku. And how that commitment could put pressure on the idol to answer it on the same level. I even made a video about it in 2015, which I rewatched to write this and it was so very painful. Oh my god, the cringe. My line of thought at the time was that they're spending all this money and effort for the idol's sake, so maybe the minimum she can do is, in return, not have this favorite person in her life. Together with, it's their culture, we don't get it because our culture is different. Yikes. I'm gonna say what I think this um, previous line of thought of mine is wrong and how my view has changed. But first things first. God, I hope this whole thing is making sense. Please stick with me. I'm not making this video for a huge audience that may come here um, without knowing what an idol is, but for the sake of argument, and uh, maybe this goes viral because you never know with YouTube. And Idoru is a girl. Well, there are boy groups too, but I literally don't know nothing about them, so I'm gonna focus on the girls, right? So a girl, or a group of 5, 10, 40 girls? usually from ages 12 to 25, I said usually, but calm down, I'm gonna get there, who sing and dance and give live performances, like other artists, but also appear on TV shows, radio, which is Japanese for a podcast, yes, radio is still big in Japan, guys, commercials, theater, YouTube, etc. Plus, and this is a very important part of it, the idol give attention to her fans through handshakes, fan club events, like exclusive live performances, even bus tours. There are some other minor interactions, like online fan signings Haruporo have been doing lately, blog posts you can comment on. Nowadays we get most of them on social media like Instagram. Some idols may have a message app with a monthly subscription fee. We've got websites dedicated to streaming uh, indie idols. And let's not forget about their special merchandising. All of this is done to create a connection between the idol and her fans. I got into idols because of their music first, their cute look second. But what really made me a lifetime fan was watching the girls from Haruporo closely. Uh, at least as closely as YouTube will let me since I live in Brazil and they are in Japan and I have never lived in Japan in my life. Their earnest personalities, big smiles, fun interactions with each other, but also seeing how hard they work to give us a flawless performance every time. Sometimes they be bath and sweat, but their smiles were all shy and brighter. And when they smile, I smile. By the way, I'm sure K-pop fans have a similar experience, as I've heard from friends of mine, even though Korean idols and Japanese idols are very different, but I don't know enough about K-pop to elaborate. Okay, so now we know what an idol is, 
let's go back to that question. Why would a fan do something like spending loads of money to travel around the world and see this girl perform? They must be like crazy mad for her, right? Well, the only thing that I said in my older video that I still think is true is that we used to have two reasons to be someone's fan here in the West. Reason number one, we admire their skills. So, like in their music, their singing voice, their dance skills, maybe their acting. That would be people that really like a musician, but don't know their age or their real name or any of their personal information. You know, once my uncle got my grandpa um, Elvis Presley biography book for Christmas, to what my grandpa said, the hell I care about his life. I only like his music. Reason number two, we're attracted to them as a person. So, people that are not very talented, all their talent doesn't matter as much as their appearance and appeal. That's your regular teenager fangirling over Justin Bieber or whoever's popular nowadays, I have no idea. Or like someone who has a crush on Hollywood actors. <clears throat> I don't have a crush on Emma Stone, you do. So, given these two categories and the fact that idols are not usually talented musicians, we automatically put the fans in category number two. And most of the girls are minors. And most of the fans are middle-aged men. I'm not gonna lie, we do have some people like that in the fandom, we call them gachikoi. A type of fan that would date their favorite idol if they could. But I think the vast majority of us, at least outside Japan, which is what I personally know about, fit into a third category. Reason number three, we want to cheer for them. Their joy is our joy. That'd be something like cheering for a sports team, which is not something we usually apply to performance in the music industry. So I get why people are skeptical when I try to convince them that the idol industry is not actively about pedophilia. But this will be the focus for another video. Through this cheering, we create human connections, something we may be craving for. Think about that shut-in hardcore otaku again. Yeah, some may be delusional, but I think most of them don't expect romantic love from their idols at all. They just feel good knowing that they're support. Buying goods, tickets, spreading word about them. It's making way for someone to pursue their dreams. They're helping someone to feel happy. Thus, they feel part of that happiness. I am very much against the capitalist society of consumption we have today, but idols make me. Someone who's afraid to spend money on food want to spend hundreds of dollars to go and shake their hands for five seconds and say Which I'm never gonna do since Eddie has graduated forever. And I don't think this concept of cheering is completely foreign to us Westerns. Not only the sports team thing, but think about digital influencers like YouTubers. Okay, some people might like their videos because of some skill they have, how well they articulate their essays, or maybe they're funny vloggers. But I can say for myself that I'd get very attached to my favorite YouTubers and podcasters when I get to know them as people. I think it's in my personality to enjoy cheering for their success and overall happiness. After seeing how hard they work, to bring us quality content. The thing is, even if they don't like the idol in a romantic way or god forbid sexual way, some otaku may get very possessive of their favorite ones. In Oshigabudokan Itekuretara Shinu, which is a good anime to understand the basic idol otaku feeling, the main character, who is very much not Kachikoi, hesitates if she really wants Mai, not her Oshiman, or favorite member, to be popular, since she'd have to share her with many others. In the real world, this involves not only money, which can be a lot, 
but also hundreds of hours dedicated to an idol by doing all these things I said before, watching their live streams, commenting on their Instagram pictures, talking about her online and promoting their group by making fan-made content. Things even I can do here from Brazil. In fact, I've made English subtitles to some of their YouTube shows and that took me weeks. Some people, when they do all of that, they get the same idea I got back in 2014. That the minimum the idol can do is give back and work as hard as she can. Which is kind of understandable, right? It's their job. They're being paid for it. And I hope they're being paid well, because we know that's not the thrill for many chick idol, which are indie groups that are not backed by big companies. But why is dating even related to that? This is something we from the overseas community simply cannot understand or accept. When the Sayuki being fired thing happened, I recall many of my friends on Twitter saying Did she slack off during rehearsals? Was she late to her appointment? Because I think that's not the problem, is it? <sighs> my view of this issue resumes in one thing. It's all about image. I don't think the hardcore otaku get mad because they think the idol is their girlfriend and she's cheating on them. But they do believe she betrayed a certain image they built of her inside their minds. So when she does something outside that framing, they get disappointed. They have to look a certain way, behave a certain way. And yes, it is very much attached to the image of conservative femininity which is especially strong in Japan. Young, fresh, but well-mannered, petite girls who you can protect or roll over. And I'm going to remember you all that Japan is a country where the feminist movement's still very weak and people are not really aware how that image, that unrealistic idealization is bad for both women and men. The former Haruprou leader and current solo idol Wada Ayaka talks a lot about this. I even had the joy of translating one of her articles to English, and I'll leave the link in the description below, where she talks about how her major in arts helped her see through all of this. Ayato believes idols can still be idols outside that framing, and fortunately she's not the only one. Remember when I said idols are usually from ages 12 to 25? Damn, there's even this joke inside the Haruprou fandom because every single leader had graduated, left the company before turning 25 just until recently. But there are some agencies that are changing this, like the very popular 48 group idol Kashiwagi Yuki, who's had her 30th birthday last year and is still active. All the girls from the extremely successful Momoiro Clover Z are 25 or above now. The truth is, living as an idol is not easy and some of them like to graduate so they can live more freely and not have to sacrifice all of their weekends. But it's nice if they have a choice, you know, if they want to keep going. Something that made a really wonderful buzz recently is the fact that the idol meeting from Denpaguninku got married in 2019 without graduating from the group. Not only that, but she got pregnant a year later and still managed to perform while being six months pregnant. Isn't that awesome? That's why the Sayuki announcement hit me so hard. Not only me, but everyone I know who's been following Haruputo for years. We kinda know Hello Project is this thief company with strict rules, they're not very innovative music videos, and the fact that they only let the girls have Instagram accounts like what? Last year? I don't know, the COVID pandemic made time weird lady. But it was late, okay? And since Tsung Song, the creator of Morning Musume and Hello Project, quit the producer position due to health problems, they might be a bit more standardized than back in the day, but still, we wanted to believe. This was my reaction when I heard the news. And yes, the guy she's been caught dating seems to have 
questionable personality. Not because of what magazine says about him, which is garbage, but you know, magazines about celebrities. But the fact that he completely ignored all of this and didn't stand up for Sayuki even the tiniest bit. Yeah, Japanese people don't like to speak up, blah 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 blah. Anyway, I have no reason to like him. This was my reaction not only because I love the girls and don't want anything bad happening to them, but also because of this new normal, beyond much, the idol industry seemed to be going towards. Plus the fact that the last time an idol had to resign for being called date in Hello Project was like 2007? 8 if you count Kanda from Cute? Well, it was more than a decade ago. We did have a fishy situation involving Kobush Factory in 2017, but none of them was really called dating, you know? Not forgetting the fact that Saiki was highly regarded as one of the best vocals in Hello Project. <laughs> Top 1 or 2, depending on your personal taste. Between 52 members. And that ranking was given by the members themselves, the community, and people outside, like the popular music producer Hyadain. So we allowed ourselves to have some hope for Sayuki. Even the Japanese fandom seemed to agree that it would be wrong to fire Sayuki without at least giving her a graduation concert to say goodbye. And then, ban. She left Juice Juice in less than 24 hours, with anything more than a depressing note and a depressing blog post. I'm going to read them for you now. Oh no, I kicked the... Oh my god, the... Oh my god, it's never going to be the same anymore. Is it the same? I don't know. <sighs> from Hello Project official site, words from the representative director Nishiguchi Takeshi. Thank you for always supporting Juice Regarding member Takagi Saiki, she will be leaving Juice as well as Hello Project. Takagi herself quickly gave us explanation about the current case being reported. Moreover, the overall decision was that Takagi was lacking self-awareness as a member of Hello Project, which led to this conclusion. From tomorrow on, she won't be appearing in further concerts or events or those previously announced. About activities from now on, it will be decided after further discussion. We ask for your patience. We deeply apologize to the fans and who it may concern for causing worries and trouble with this sudden announcement. We appreciate your acknowledgement and understanding. We look forward to your continued support of Takagi Sayuki and Juice Juice. 12th of February 2021 from blah 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 blah. Sounds like the girl was selling drugs in her backyard. Also, we can't be sure about how much of this was Sayuki's will, right? But together with this note, we have another one from Sayuki herself, which was later expanded as her last blog entry, and it goes like this. Raise yourselves. Thank you always for your warm support. At this time, I, Takagi Sayuki, will be ending my activities in Juice Juice and Hello Project as well. I'm deeply sorry for suddenly announcing it in this manner and for causing worries and troubles. I acted carelessly, lacking self-awareness as a member of the group. I ended up betraying the feelings of lots of people. Juice Juice members are so important to me and I love them so much. I loved both the times where we just hang out together as well as the atmosphere at live performances. To me, it was an irreplaceable place to where I belonged. I love the original Juice Juice members who walked with me since the formation of the group as my own family. I apologize for having besmirched what we built after overcoming so many things. And to all my juniors that I should be supporting from now on, but instead I'm leaving the group in this manner. I am sorry. <sighs> Since it's a sudden announcement, I'll be leaving the group without being able to stand on stage with everyone and without delivering a live performance with the whole group to you guys. All the fans who cheered for me and all those who were concerned about me were always so warm and gentle and saved me many times. 
they gave me support and I'm deeply sorry to have betrayed everyone's feelings. I don't think I can be forgiven and I won't ask to be forgiven. I thought about how I should take responsibility for it and how I could show my gratitude and the result was making the announcement in this manner. The period in which I was able to perform in Hello Pro Egg and in Joyce Juice is something priceless to me. Being able to meet my beloved comrades, the staff, all the fans, it's something I'll never forget. I really can't show enough gratitude, thank you. I'm not sure I can say this from our stand, but please keep supporting Jesus from now on. Told you it was depressing. But this part is what hit the hardest. I don't think I can be forgiven and I won't ask to be forgiven. Girl, did you just commit murder or what? Plus, what she says next about how she thought it was the best way to solve things makes me think that she really didn't allow herself to continue within the group. Like all she could do to make up to the terrible mistake of dating at the age 24 was resigning in this humiliating manner. Please, stop. Ugh, I was so pissed. Oh, and remember how I said I didn't like Yuri because he said nothing about Sayuki? She was going to appear on TV that week singing with another Haruburo idol and the footage was cancelled. Meanwhile, Yuri appeared on several TV shows to promote his hit song, Dry Flower. Sayuki was never mentioned once. Those already into Japanese music probably know that, but this kind of backlash is always for the woman and never for the man. And it's so unfair, it makes my blood boil with rage. By the way, I'm not even going to enter the topic of how wrong it is for a tabloid to invade their lives like this, since there is a picture of her inside the apartment. <sighs> but let's move on. On March 31st, nearly seven weeks after those notes, we received news from the Hello Project of Suicide again. Notice regarding the termination of Takagi Sayuki's contract. Takagi, who belongs to our company, had her exclusive management contract terminated at the end of March. In discussions about future activities, from the beginning, Takagi insisted on if I'm not a member of Juice Juice, I want to leave the company. And also, I want to work in music-related activities in my own way. She was offered to keep working in music inside the company and to take her time to think about her future activities. And she was also told once again about how the group members and staff are worried about her future activities. But her intentions of beginning music activities on her own had not changed, hence she wasn't convinced and we decided to respect her determination. Thank you all very much for all your support of Takagi Sayuki until now. There's not much we can infer through a note like this, but, but what looks like to me is that she would rather keep being a member of Joyce Juice, but since that wasn't an option, whether because the company wouldn't let her or because she wouldn't allow herself, she chose to leave the company rather than be put in M-Line or something like that. M-Line is a category inside the front where some of the idols go after graduating if they want to keep performing and they can get married and live their normal lives and only perform like a few times a year. But Saiki refused that. We'll never really know what she was thinking at that time. Even though she made herself on Twitter and Instagram account a few days after her contract was terminated. But she even gently asked people to stop DMing her, asking to talk about it and said she was doing fine. However, we have one brave girl that showed us what she was thinking. And that is Oda Sakura, the other powerhouse vocal we have in Hello Project. On February 17th, a few days after it was announced that Saiki would leave Hello Project with nothing more than that sad note, Sakura posted an entry in her blog. And I have translated it to English, so I can read it to you guys here. This is Oda Sakura. In the past few days, Hello Project and its fans are dealing with mixed feelings. 
I'll be using this post to put together all the things that came to my mind in this period. It's common for people to isolate a fraction of my speech and exaggerate only that bit. Recently, another situation happened where people got worried imagining my feelings because of said speech. And like that, the image of who I am grows bigger again. Yes, I think the image you all have of me is me while I'm being an idol. But that would be quite different from what I am naturally. And I get very anxious imagining the day I won't be able to endure it anymore. This blog post have my true feelings, which can be a little different from what you guys would imagine. I would like to start talking about the idols from various generations and music genres I've observed and experienced in my nine years as an idol. Those who don't like it, please gladly ignore this blog post. Go Queen! There are some points about the way the idols from nowadays ought to be that make me somewhat discomfortable. This is about female idols, but... My impression is that one generation before us, at the idol golden age, the idols from the 70s and 80s had weapons such as singing, outstanding looks, star quality, etc. Now, I feel like being a girl in itself has become the weapon. And so, common are lyrics which appeal to the male audience, and idols are becoming more like a known, familiar being. Singing and dancing are things that depend on your innate talent, study and hard work, but if you need to fight using something everyone has from the moment they were born, inevitably the number of idols will increase and the sorting will be someone's taste or who they end up seeing first, wherein I love Hello Project for using music as the weapon. That's why, in face of the reality that even Takagi-san, who has the greatest weapon in her hands, which was her voice, was not able to fight, I felt like music was not the most important thing, and that made me very sad. So all the effort we put in singing and dancing, dieting, etc. is in vain? Is idol even a category of music at all? What I think is one thing, and one thing only, that it would be nice if idols could be evaluated by their individuality and music. But I think like that just because I love music. I thought that all the things I received from you guys as a professional were because of my singing, dancing, smiling, sparkling, etc. which are things I perform on stage. But if my private life is also taken into account, then it wouldn't even be okay for me to be just chilling at home. I think maybe idols got into this position so they could be differentiated from singers. Then, what are idols? I want to think that everything I did to be Mori Musumi, to stand on stage, was not pointless. But I can't think favorably of those who use the title of idol for anything that's not their job. I'm not sure if that's going to happen while I'm still active, but I wish for the day when idols can stand out even more. There is nothing more wonderful than the happiness of the fans being proportional to the happiness of the idols themselves. And I want to keep facing my challenges as a musician to make justice of what I just said here. Oda Sakura. I literally could not be more proud of her. Of course, some people got her message wrong and she had to apologize for what she wrote because of course she had. But it doesn't change the fact that she spoke her mind. When she writes, is idol even a category of music at all? I'm just like, beautiful. Oda, you're a queen. Beautiful. That and the question, then what the hell are idols? Just let clear to me that she doesn't want her private life to be more important than her job. Like any other job in the world. And her job is to be an entertainer through music. Yeah, idols are more than singing and dancing. We all know that. But they're also not your friends, or your girlfriends, or yours at all. I kind of disagree with Sakura when she talks about the idol golden age thing, because for all I know, it was even worse for the idol image when she was called dating back in the day. But I completely agree that it's wrong to sell the idols just as girls. This might get very controversial, and I'll try to be as clear as possible in case you disagree with me. But remember my three reasons people are used to be fans of something? When I put idol fans in the third category of cheering, I very much mean cheering as they do their best to entertain us through their performance. 
And this is something I thought from the very beginning. I never cared if the idol doesn't start singing well or dancing well or anything, as long as it's clear they're putting effort on it. I always thought they should aim to get better, you know? If not, why are we cheering for? In the end, I think my personal opinion might be similar to Sakura because I too love music. But let's say you disagree, you don't think they should aim to get better at all. Then I would say you fall into the second category. You're a fan because you like them as a person or their looks. And I'm not saying there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but it does get weird when you're a 45 year old man and the idol is a 14 year old girl. Still, weird as it is, again, that's topic for another video because in my opinion, there are some very bad negatives about it. But anyway, some of you can separate the idol as a professional and who she is as a person and wouldn't care if she was dating or anything. The real problem is when you become part of a system that tried to control little girls' lives because you believe a certain ideal of what idols should be or how they should behave. A system that, even though most people involved in Sayuki's case did not agree with, was still able to destroy her beautiful dream. And that's not fair! <sighs> Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is, remember when I said at the beginning, a long time ago, that I only to talk not only about what happened, but also how it affected me? And well, the impact was so deep, I felt I couldn't keep this hobby without making this video. And almost a year after it happened, I can say that things are certainly not the same anymore. As I grow older, um, stuff that I didn't think of as a problem start to bother me more and more. As I get a wider vision of the world, I can't keep agreeing with things like it's their culture, I don't get to say it is wrong. If there's someone suffering because of it, hell yeah, I say it's wrong. Maybe I don't understand everything, maybe I'll never know what it is to be like to be a girl in Japan living under those systems. But if you read the painful note Saiki wrote about having this merch, her group's name, and all because of something so human as to fall in love, and you still say there's nothing wrong here, then you don't have a heart. But I know most people watching must agree with me that it is in fact something wrong here. The thing is, how do I force myself to ignore the fact that this company, which all my beloved idols are under, still condones a system that is so cruel and egoist and, and terribly misogynistic? Idols still bring me so much joy. Every time I watch a new music video from Anjirumu or Beyond, I'm sure Morning was made too, too. That silly name. I'm reminded of all the good things idols have brought me in the past 14 years, which is more than half my age. But I also get wary of not knowing when another girl might disappear before our eyes without even a chance to say goodbye and that just makes me sad <sighs> but like I said I love the girls and even though I can't make myself watch Juicy's performing old songs anymore I do hope that things are changing positively in the idol industry and hopefully in the future the girls will be allowed to pursue their dreams. All of their dreams. Thanks everyone for watching. I'm sorry this video is so long. Please leave me a like if you can and share this with your friends. I 
cannot promise when my next video will be, but I'll do my best so this is not the last one, okay? So thanks again, I'll see you, bye bye. An idol is a girl. Well, there are boy girls. Boy girls, yes, there are boy girls. There are boy girls. I love you, boy girls. Think how hard they work to give us a flawless performance every time. A flawless performance every time. It's making way for someone to pursue their dreams. To pursue, pursue. In the real world, in the real, in the real world, in the real world. I hate English. Seventeenth. Not only that, but you got pregnant. A liar, a, a liar. I hate English.